Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode 41. Hoping you guys are doing great today. It is, um, what is it? We, it is Monday, Monday evening, so 11.05 uh, p.m. At the, at the moment. You'll probably be listening to this around midnight. Uh, what well, to, today? Well, today, um, took care of flights, try to... Um, Secured all our travel and accommodations for the next couple of shows. Um, got a bunch of things going on here in the office. Uh, just switched over my t-shirt store. <clears throat> I got some really cool freestyle um, uh, t-shirts, guys. If you ever want to check them out. Um, I just took the store down um, because I got a new one. And uh, I got about... I got a bunch of designs, probably about 200 designs, uh, pretty dope, so uh, I try to make them look as cool as possible, so like if you guys want to wear this stuff in a club or you want to go out, uh, I don't want it to look like it's advertisement or anything, so uh, they're pretty cool, I have about 200, um, about 200 designs, I'm not going to keep up all 200, I'm going to be rotating them and the ones that are doing well, I'm going to hold on to the ones that are not, I'm going to totally delete, I don't need to have uh all that stuff on the store. I want to keep it nice and streamlined. I want to make sure it's the best of the best. So, uh, but we got some pretty cool stuff, man. You need to check it out. I'm doing top of the line t-shirts, the Bella canvas, which the three zeros are ones, which are like uh, one of the best sellers out there right now. I'm doing uh, some hoodies, just really just the t-shirts um, for the men and the women. I like t-shirts. I'm a big t-shirt fan. I think t-shirts are cool for everyone. Not trying to, to get too fancy. Uh, like I said, I have a couple of uh, hoodies, but I think I'm not going to do too many of those. Um, I have a really cool um, all-around, uh, or all it's called all-over t-shirt, where <clears throat> I have my graphics all over. It's on the back, the front, the sleeves. It's pretty dope. So if you guys don't, don't know, I have a, a clothing line that I created as a spring off of my label from back in the days. It's called Style and Free. Um, I ran it as uh, like a t-shirt um, um, store for quite a while online. Um, but I didn't really put that much emphasis on that. It really didn't put that much uh, that much push to it. Um, I'm glad I didn't either because I have a, like a new setup. Uh, they're making it a lot more easier right now. Uh, the payment setups are good with the credit cards and it's 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 working and it, it's fine like all the bugs are gone so i'm kind of glad i didn't really push it because the the few that i did push i was experiencing some problems uh but now they're pretty much they're good uh people who have been on my mailing list have been receiving um advertisement of the t-shirt line so i haven't been posting that regularly but i will i'm gonna start so i do i recommend you guys to pick it up um, what I'm doing with the t-shirts is they're going to have in the back an outside label uh, called Style and Free. So we're going to be pushing that brand. I feel, like I said, I've had that brand from before I had La Entertainment. So it's been around for a very long time. Uh, so be on the lookout for the Style and Free brand. Um, those tees, okay. Um, what else we got going on? Um, shout out to 808 Beats. Um uh, these are the people who have the wine. Uh, it's a, basically uh, right now it's a red wine out of California. Um, the cool thing about this wine is uh, me and Angel are part of, we're a part of it. So um, you'll see her actually on the label. So you might want to check it out. 808 Beats. I'll be promoting uh, the website real soon. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, that's gonna be really cool. Um, those that wine is being made in California, uh, right where the wines are made. So uh, 
be on the lookout. It's gonna make a little noise with that. I think it's gonna be really cool. We got a few uh, other items that we're working on right along those lines. Um, what else we have going on? I have an online course too that I'm working on. I've actually finished it. Uh, I just kind of had to side tr sidetrack and do a few other things. Um, but it's based off my third book, Freestyle Promotions, and the seven simple steps to getting started. If you guys have any desire whatsoever to learn uh, the ins and outs of being a freestyle club or concert promoter, you might want to really check this out. Whether you got the book or you didn't get the book yet, um, I have several promoters who have gotten the book and that helped them get their start. It was cool. It's just enough information to kind of get you going, uh, but not so much that's going to, you know, slow you down. So it's really cool. So you might want to check that out once I start promoting the course. You'll see it. You'll see it if you're following me in any way. Um, but it's 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 really cool. I mean, this course uh, will kind of write, like you know put you right on the track. It'll teach you everything you need to know, and then it kind of help you use your own uh, judgment, you know, because that's what the key is. The key is, and you know, it's not all structure. Nothing runs by a set, you know, set principles. You kind of got to feel. You're dealing with people. You're dealing with artists. You have to know how to. Um, to work. Remember, you when as a promoter, you're dealing with the artists, you're dealing with the club owners, or the club managers, and you're dealing with the fans. So you have to be versatile. You got to know how to deal with this. So um, uh, be on the lookout for that course. It's going to be pretty informative. So and I have a uh, a huge movement that's going to be a part of that. You know, I have a goal of trying to help um, build um, freestyle promoters. We need to develop and help help develop new freestyle promoters at least give them the encouragement to give it a try you know anybody who's ever had any type of desire or even considered getting involved in the freestyle or even promotions in general whether it's hip-hop or something else uh but i you know i specialize in freestyle i know the the the, the exact potential um you can look at, at hip-hop as oh yeah but you know uh we could probably do a lot better with doing promoting hip hop, yeah. But you're also paying a hell of a lot more money for the artists, for the venues, for the insurance, and it's gonna take a lot more for you to promote because you got a lot more competition. But when we're dealing with freestyle, man, we can pretty much streamline it. We can go right to our audience, um, and you can really do well. And now the promoters that I've been around, I've seen them make a killing. So I know the potential that's here. You don't you don't have to play in the big ocean. You can play in a lake and get and just kill it because your competition is very low. So um <clears throat> so I will be showing you guys uh some of that some of those techniques and you know basically just the, the um uh you know the thought process on you know how to how to move forward and how to how to be successful, man, or at least, you know, I mean, we're always striving for success. As an agent myself, and also a manager of artists, um, I need promoters, as many as we possibly can. We all do. Because when you only have a few promoters, yet you have a hundred artists, it's like everybody has to wait online, and it's crazy, you know? So, um, even the top of the top of the artists, man, are not going to kill it the way they should be killing it, uh, because there's limited resources. There are limited amount of promoters that are out there so uh, we're going to try to see what we can do to help you know so you, to change that so if you have any kind of desire or ever had any kind of desire or even considered um, getting into the freestyle promotions game you might want to check this out okay and I got you guys man like I'm not I'm not going to teach you to start this stuff and disappear I'm gonna I want to be there I want to kind of have be hands-on and try to see what I can you know, just kind of really help build this community. I just think we have so much, so much potential. And um, uh, a lot of us, you know, I, t I turned 53 in October. So it's, I'm an average age for the freestyle genre, whether it's the artists or the fans. Um, so you have a lot of fans who were, I mentioned this before, who might be, um, you know, military or police or fire department or whatever. And a lot of them are... They got to retire pretty early, and right now, now they're kind of kicking back. They like doing nothing for for a while, but like it seems like 
the more I speak to uh, these these people, they're now looking for something else to do. They got money. They want to kind of put their money somewhere. They want to generate more money, and they want to have a good old time, you know. <clears throat> so, if you're a, um, a retired, if you're retired and you just have the time on your hands, yeah, you might want to really check this out, man. You might it might just open up a whole new chapter of your life and uh, and just kind of you know blow some excitement. <laughs> you know, back in, so, but, uh, and, uh, you guys will be the best because you're fans, you see, I'm actually, right now, a lot of the, the freestyle promoters that are out there are doing this strictly for the dollars, they're not really fans of the music, they're doing well by the artists, don't get me wrong, this is not a put down, but they're not really fans, they don't know everyone, they can't tell you the songs, they basically only know what they know and what they deal with, so, um, but you as a fan, though, uh, you're going to be pretty versed, quite versed in, in the freestyle genre as far as who are the artists, what they sing, where they're from. You, you, you guys probably think about it now. You know you have quite a bit of information. So who makes a better promoter than that? You see what I'm saying? Uh, so you're going to have a natural love and a natural passion, which is going to give you the ability to work put in more hours because you're enjoying yourself, you see? People say, oh, you got to take it easy. You can't work so hard. no. No, working hard is if you're, you know, carrying cement up a ladder, you know, we're not carrying cement up up a ladder, you know, we're mopping, we're not mopping hospital floors, you know what I'm saying? Um, so it's not about working hard or when, when you're doing something that you love, you actually feel like you're cheating someone because you're putting all these hours and the more hours you, you put in, um, you know, the greatest, the greater your potential of really, really, you know, captivating whatever market you're dealing with, really taking it over. Um, so, uh, yeah, so if you have that kind of passion and you put into it, um, you're going to win. You're, you're going to win. So, uh, so, and I want you to win. By you winning, I win. And that's not just a cliche. It's straight up. I'm, a, I'm an agent. You know who buys from me? There's only one person that buys from me. That's a promoter. That's the person I'm trying to teach you how to be. Um, and as a manager, if I'm a manager, we're not doing new records right now. What we're doing? Shows. So it's important for me to either, if I'm dealing with uh, a, a promoter or club owner direct, or maybe to, I'm an agent, so no need for me to go to an agent. However, there are agents that do contact me uh, to help them pretty much uh, on the bookings. So... So anyway, but anyway, I just want to to bring that up. Check that out. March 27th, you know, I got Yes, Yes, Y'all, which is my three-book um, novel series. You might want to really check that out. Um, if you go on my personal page on Facebook, you'll notice that I am uh, promoting a special. Um, the special is basically, I take a hit. I actually take a loss on it, but it's a good way for me to promote the book. Um, you can actually get all three books for the price of two. So that's one off. Um, one of the books you get for free, basically. Um, and I'm doing an end for the first 25 books. Um, when I send them in, I'll send them with a signature. Now, that's almost capped. So anybody who still wants those, um, you know, come on in. Uh, uh, hit me now, but uh, there's not too many that are left that I'm willing. The thing is, I don't want to sit there um, signing so many books. It's just a lot of signing and then having to ship it out. So I don't mind doing that. Like if I meet you guys at a, at a concert or something, I see you on the road, whatever, that's fine. But, you know, to sit there and do 200 books, it's just, and I have to ship them out. I'm not trying to ship that many books out, <laughs> you know. So, uh, but, but Yes, Yes, Show is a really cool urban Latino novel. Uh, it really shows uh, this guy, you know, you know, fulfill his dream, uh, you know, in the music industry and just really, really take off. And then he ends up on the other side of the business. So I don't want to get too much into it because it's really a cool story. Um, I finished it a couple years ago. I'm in the editing process and basically I'm done. I'm just cleaning it up right now. So be on the lookout for that book. Uh, uh, some of my other books was uh, Freestyle for Life. If you guys are in freestyle, you love it, and you have music, and you buy music, and, and you don't have this book, mm, there's something wrong. Okay, so most freestyle collectors have this book. Since Freestyle for Life is the first ever 
urban Latino novel based on the freestyle music genre. So, and the fact that it's it's written by a manager, booking agent of some of the biggest uh, artists in the genre. So, if you don't have that book, I will advise you to go on Amazon and get it, grab it. It actually, there's you're going to find some place another publisher is selling the book for something like, I don't know, $600 or something. So, <clears throat> because he's, he's, I'm no longer signed to him. So, um, I guess he still has it, put the price up. Why he did that, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But you could, if if you couldn't find the regular price, that's different. But you'll find it. So the original price for the book is fourteen ninety five. So please don't pay six hundred dollars for it. Okay. I'm first of all, I'm not getting any of that money. So I don't think I am. am I? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not signed with him. That might be some leftover books that he has. Who knows? So anyway, uh, but check out that book. It's definitely a classic, um, a cult classic for freestyle. Um, get it now. Uh, the other book, the second book I put out was a book called Feast Style. And if you look on the cover of that book, you'll see our, revi- our, our very own Little Susie. So so she, play, she plays in the book. I have her as the image, as the cover model for as Layla Storm, which is the vampire that the book is based on. So uh, what it's about, well... A freestyle artist just happens to be a vampire. How's that? Hmm. Uh, so <clears throat> it's it's really really cool. Um, I had to I learned so much about that whole universe, the vampire universe. When I um, when I wrote, wrote it, I didn't realize that the rules are so strict, and there's a community that will basically rip you apart if you violate it. Um, I learned so much from it. It's incredibly fascinating. It's almost like these vampires are, you know, are for real. Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they are. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't seen one yet, so I don't want to. I'm not trying to see one. Um, but uh, uh, the book is really cool. Um, <clears throat> I always wanted to do like a horror kind of supernatural and I remember sitting down one day and I just had this crazy idea for a story and it just started to develop in my head and sometimes I basically I nearly write the entire book in my head you know before I lay it on paper um but you know a lot of the stories run parallel between me and little Susie since I have been on the road with her for so many years so not really I don't know any of this well yeah maybe a couple of the little situations so uh, I don't want to get into that because it'll be a spoiler and I don't want to spoil anything but you might want to check out that book you you might really uh, you might really dig it I thought it was incredible I was really excited and I was pretty um, impressed that I had pulled it off and um, I stayed within the rules I got a, a seal of approval from several people and um, that book you won't see me promote it, even though it's always going to be on Amazon. You don't really see me promote it because I only promote it. I promote it in the month of October. So, which is, of course, the month of uh, Halloween. So, I do that for a couple of reasons. Uh, I just want it to be that kind of book. You know, almost like when you um, you can't uh, you can't watch, um, what is it, uh... Happy, uh, Merry Christmas, Charlie Brown, right? You can't watch that no other time on TV. They don't run it, but you will catch it on Christmas. And I don't know, they, they play it once or twice, maybe only once, extremely limited. And I just think it adds something to that. So um, the book now, maybe at some point, I, make, I might make the book unavailable um, during the rest of the year, have it only available in the month of October. Now, that might be interesting, you know, but we'll see. I'll, I'll think about that because it's not about that. I can't do it. I can actually do that. Um, but is it a good idea? You know, like, why would I want to take the book off the market, you know? So uh, I think that just kind of stops other people from uh, getting the opportunity to to get to grab it, man. It's a legacy. It's a, it's a legendary book at this point. It's another uh cult classic or about to be you know um so but you definitely want to check that book out 
Uh, yeah, I think you guys were really. I dug it, man. I dug. It. I, did, I did some really cool stuff, man. I, I did some crazy ass shit. If you have the mentality to kind of in the, like the imagination, uh, to kind of when you read that to really bring it. I I think I did a pretty good job. I think I did a really good job. So, um, I remember after writing it, I thought about that book. That that was scaring me. But I just it just got stuck in my head. You know, I thought about the characters. I thought about the circumstances of the characters, and uh, uh, and I, I was it was really cool, man, really cool. So, and then of course March 27th, yes, yes, y'all. Make sure you uh, you can order it as a Kindle now, um, but it's expensive as a Kindle, so like nine dollars. Um, it sold. We we got some sales. I'm not really pushing it. It's I have it high for a reason. Uh, because I'm really waiting for people to, but that was the only way for me to generate pre-sale interest was to bring, put the, put on the Kindle, kind of put the price up. I didn't expect people to purchase, but they did. Um, and what happens is, as soon as the book gets released, they're like the first ones to get it. They'll have it. But but what I am doing is I'm doing a special. Go on my Facebook page, see what that is. Uh, you look up on the top, you'll be able to. Um, See, I'm advertising it, you know. And if you have any questions, message me on Facebook. is always good. I'm everywhere, but Facebook stays open not just for me to browse, which I do. I'm not going to front. Uh, but a lot of my promoters reach out to me uh, through Messenger. Uh, that's like it's either going to be uh, email or Messenger. And a lot of times it's Messenger because I always keep uh, Facebook open on my computer. It'll, the screen will be minimized. But it's but it'll be open, so it, you can always tell. It looks like I'm always online. I'm on, always on Facebook, so I, I am, but I'm not. You know, so I am. It's open on my computer, but I'm not always on it like that. So I try to take breaks and try to get in between and see what's happening. But anyway, sorry I spent this entire podcast basically pitching you. Um, it wasn't really a pitch. It was more to make you guys aware that um, we have more than just freestyle music or freestyle shows. There's other things that we're working on and <clears throat> I want you to maybe you have your own ideas or uh, maybe there's something that you can do that can kind of cross paths with freestyle. I mean, let me know. I really like to know what that is and see if maybe there's something I can do, you know, uh, to help out. Um, I'm not trying to be a part of everything, but I, I would love to see um, other businesses grow within under our umbrella as far as the freestyle umbrella. So we go out there, come up with different ideas and and pitch them. You know, listen, everybody has ideas. So never be scared to show your ideas. Everybody has ideas. Then once you put out the idea, uh, just be one of the first to move it, move on it, you know. So I notice that a lot. A lot of people have ideas. We can sit down and we can throw, throw, throw out some of the best ideas you ever heard. And we get a little small group of people. But guess what? Nobody's going to um, execute them. No one's going to initiate uh, the process. So guess what happens to that idea? It dies with the person who came up with it. So, um, uh, yeah, so that's the whole thing. I just want to make people aware that we do have these things. Uh, things like the wine are not mine, but we are, a, well, not mine, but we're partners. So um, I am a part of that venture, and it's my benefit. It's a benefit to me for it to succeed, okay? Not to mention Angel is on the label. So check that out. Another great collector's item. Even if you don't drink wine, you might want to get a bottle. Um, I'm getting a few shipped to me. Um, I don't drink them. Angel's probably going to drink one. Uh, the rest is going to be put away. <laughs> so um, in my office, actually, you'll see it on the shelf. So anyway, uh, guys, thanks again. I appreciate you. Hope you enjoyed this podcast. I hope you've been enjoying all of them. Um, we are headed to, this is uh, episode 42. Um, cool. I'm feeling comfortable. And until tomorrow, good night, Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.